Okay, so today we have Katie. Katie, actually, you haven't been working with me for not long at all. So we definitely have, we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. So with that being said, I'm going to let Katie go ahead and introduce herself. We're going to kind of just jump straight into it. Hey, so I'm Katie Harmston. I'm from England, Yorkshire in England. And uh, I would say I'm more of a wildlife painter, but I sort of like dabble in different areas. So my brain just goes... <laughs> So with that being said, let's talk a little bit about that just to start it off. So how would you describe your art or what type of art would you say you create the most? Um, wildlife paintings, um, but most of my work is like very colourful because the whole point behind my work um, is that I, I love wildlife and nature and I feel like mm. as human <laughs> we're sort of like destroying the natural world which um in any of my work uh, you'll notice like it i've got like a sweeping motion that comes away from the main subject so it's like we're draining the color and the beauty away from the natural world so that's sort of my thing but i say it all revolves around uh wildlife but when i sort of dabble in different areas that style still stays as part of that running theme as such. Yep. And speaking of your work, if anybody wants to just check it out afterwards, what's your Instagram? It's Katie with a Y, uh, Harmston, H A R M S T O N, and then it's art. So it's A R T S on the end. Okay, perfect. And then now getting into the little bit of the details, how long have you been creating art? Ooh. Um, so I probably be, well, I've been creating art since I was a kid, really, but um, I think that's that's quite normal with artists, even yeah. if you to go down that path. Um, but my granddad was a painter, so my granddad taught me how to, <laughs> to draw and paint, but when I was a kid, I was terrible. <laughs> Let's just put that up there. Um, so it wasn't really something like, oh, I'm going to go and be an artist as such. Um, but I sort of went in and out of it throughout my life. But the last sort of, I'd say eight years, I've sort of really um, focused on it as such. So it all it only started because I I was bored and I wanted something to do in 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 my times that, that I could really like focus on and stuff um, instead of sitting down and watching TV all the time. I'm not that type of person. <laughs> um, so. It just got better and better after that and then um in the past sort of few years it it got so good that um I'd blow my own trumpet light but <laughs> it enough where i was like oh i could do something with this it started that i drew a um a oh god it's gotta be longer than eight years actually because my Nephew's nine, and it started when I drew a photo of him for my brother for his um, for his first birthday. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be a lot longer than that. Time flies. <laughs> you talking like you're just so so old. Time flies. I'm so old. <laughs> <laughs> what that be say? Are you a full time artist at this point? Uh, not full time. No. So I when I came into the training. I was still, um, I was full time, um, but at this point I've requested, so I work for the NHS, I work from home, which is quite handy, but I've requested to go down to two days a week. And the only reason that it's a lesson learned, the only reason I've not completely like quit my job is one, because I stay in an NHS pension, which is good, two because those two days a week will cover all my bills i think in the past i've made the mistake of just jumping right in which as an artist being a full-time artist sounds like a great plan but the thing is is when you you know when you get a certain amount of money in every month a portion of that is going to pay your mortgage and your house or you know whatever bills you've got going on 
so that takes away from the money that you can reinvest back into your work so this time I was like right so I'm just gonna work as much as I need to to pay my bills and then I have the money available whatever I earn each month to play with and expand my business so I thought about it in quite a logical and sensible way I think that makes total sense it makes total sense and before joining the training, right? Because you mentioned before joining, you was full time at your job. Now, after joining, you're um working two hours a day or two hours a week. No, like two has, days a week. I'm waiting for it to be authorized to see if I can go part time. Because if I can't go part time, I would have to quit anyway, just because I can't manage everything. Um, but yeah, I was working full time, and then in like the past month, I've put that uh, request in to go two days a week. So it'll be about, I think it was out about 19 hours or something like that. Okay. And before joining, well, I'm going to jump around a bit here. So now you put the request in the go two times, two days a week. Why? What changed? So, um, uh, so <laughs> fair amount of changed. Um, well, so before we even talk about what changed, I'm gonna interrupt that question with this question first. Mm -hmm. How long have you been a part of the training? Um, so, oh, um, I started I think in March, maybe, but I went I went away to Malaysia for two weeks, so I didn't actually start the training until I came back, which was, um, that was the end of April, so it was the start of May that. I even went through the course, never mind actually implemented anything. Um, I'd, I'd say more more or less to like the end of May that I actually started doing something. Yeah. Uh, just because of how time went on. So with that being said, you started in May, right? Now fast forward into today, which is July 20th. Mm -hmm. You're like, I had to just put in a request to go down to two days a week at my job. Why is that? So, <laughs> what changed? So, yeah, a fair amount changed. Um, so basically, uh, I I'm quite good with social media. I've been on social media for quite some time, um, but I made the decision to start two brand new social media accounts: one on TikTok, one on Instagram. Because funnily enough, on TikTok. I had a big account, it had like 230,000 followers on there and it just went stale. I think it was like the whole process through COVID and stuff like that and the, everything changing. Um, so I created two um, and my TikTok, not after long, got the most viral video I've ever gotten. Um, Let's back up a bit. Yeah. Just so everybody can understand. So what happened was you sent there like over 200,000 followers on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Oh, now we chatted. When we chatted, you're like, Droid, I created the entire new TikTok, entire new Instagram, which for me personally, I'm like, no, no, no. Because it's I'm like starting from zero all over again, right? You, you stared me against it. But I'd already created it and I thought, because I, I was just going to test it and see how it worked. Still keep my old ones, but just test it and see if it helped um and i, I do remember you saying to me um <laughs> don't 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 do that because um it was obviously you were like it's up to you but i'd steer you against it because it's very hard to grow a social media from zero to you know any sort of significant number but i thought you know i like a good challenge so <laughs> what does guy know i'm gonna go ahead and start it all over again we just meeting for the first time anyway. He don't know what you're talking about. So then it, it's, it's difficult. Social media can be very tricky. So that's why I didn't delete my other ones because I, I didn't want to just like jump in and yeah. hope for the best sort of thing. And how did we even end up on an initial call? Like what was the things you were struggling with before joining Artist Ross? So I, so I did really well in COVID, funnily enough. Um, and then when COVID ended, it, it just got difficult. It got, yeah, I think, what well, I think it was a common thing for a, just business in general. Um, after COVID, I just find it, 
I just struggled with it. And then my, as I said, my accounts just went stale. Nothing was happening with them. And I think my main problem was that I didn't really know who to go to. Like, I'm not a business person. I'm an artist. I can create things. I like making things, but business minded, I can learn as much as I need to learn, but I'm like naturally not that way inclined. So I think I I pondered on it because I saw your advertisement because I followed Louise McNaught for for years, um, just because she's a wildlife painter and yeah. yeah. So you was already following another artist who was in a trainer. Yeah. But I didn't it was I didn't see it through Louise. I just saw one of your posts come up um with her on it and I was like bit, bit fishy that what's what's that about <laughs> you know I'm you you know this as well as I do people have this perception that artists can't earn a lot of money so I was like hmm, okay but I'm also open-minded so I, I like to sort of investigate things before I make an opinion as such on <laughs> you, you never know um, but I was like, oh, so I pondered on it for about two months. Yeah. So paying for another pro program, but I was like, well, if it pays, then I can, I can, I've got like more money, to so I can pay it off more. So that's sort of how it came about as such. And then obviously we had the call and, and that just went that way. And then 10 minutes. So now we on this first call, we chat and. You mentioned that you ended up, correct me if I'm wrong, you ended up getting started on a call, but then you was also going on vacation right after that, right? So what made you decide, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get started. Because you mentioned you also was in another program at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Not ideal timing. <laughs> oh, um, funnily enough, um, I, I, I approached my partner and I was like, so have I seen this thing? <laughs> and he was like, you're already studying something, literally. And you know when you know what your partner's going to say, but you, you're going to approach the subject anyway. Um, so I was like, what do you think? Because I'm one of those people that likes to get different opinions. Like, I can make decisions for myself, but I like yep. outside opinions. Well, outside in my sort of small circle. Um so and that's why i pondered on it for a while and i was like oh yeah fair enough i'm still paying for the other course i'll, I'll wait a bit and then a week went by and i was like i'm gonna do it like i'm gonna do it <laughs> then i booked the call i was like no i don't want to wait <laughs> and then you end up getting started right when you first initially got started were you nervous like were you nervous to make that initial investment yeah purely not because I'm against like invest because I think investing in yourself, which my partner Matt is an avid person for, you need to invest in yourself in order to progress. Um, but I think what you it's not like something that you know you know for certain that you're going to get back. There's a yeah. risk aspect of any business, mm. um, and when you're putting your money down, then yeah, you. you you don't know what's going to happen sort of thing um which is i think quite a nice nice but nervous thing because you know you get what you put into it as such um but i after that initial bit i was fine but i think anyone's a bit nervous when they put money into something yeah. so after you made that investment first on that initial call with me what was the goal you set on that very first call so i i'm yeah i'm not a money person at all like i you know i like things but i'm not like i need to earn this amount of money um so i remember me saying on the call that i was like i'd be just happy just covering my monthly wage um but then my part my partner matt um he was obviously in the call as well and he said i think you know you need to be going up to that five thousand mark because by the time you take taxes into like taxes pensions all those different things that not everybody really thinks about 
at first um that would be a good goal because it that that sort of stuff would pull that down yeah probably you know about three or four thousand uh, which is obviously a very nice <laughs> income every month so the goal at the time was about three to four thousand a month yeah okay and then as of today what you're talking about as you've been active in the training two months later is three to four thousand a month still the goal yes as such because i'm only just starting out obviously i've had some good months but i don't want to i i don't want to get ahead of myself either because i understand like things fluctuate completely and just because you earn five thousand one month doesn't mean you're going to earn five thousand the next month because things can change so say for instance yeah if you get a if you get a good video on a social media platform and you do a lot of money in one month doesn't mean that you're going to do that same amount of money in the following month just because things have changed um so to be honest if i made three to four thousand every month i'd be i'd be pretty happy <laughs> and that's a really 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 good point so at this point we're talking about may june july in those three months what's the most you made in just a single month so last month I made about seven thousand four hundred pounds. So that's technically month two, seven thousand four hundred. And even though I say nothing, starting your Instagram and social medias from yeah. scratch. Yeah, yeah. So all right. I talked to a lot of artists who are scheduled to call with me at the um team and they'll be like but Droy, I only have 700 followers. I only have a thousand followers. I only have 200 followers. And you're like, yeah, I just started my accounts all over. So I'm at zero. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the, yeah, if you look at like my old account, so I wanted to restart Instagram anyway, not for, for the particular reason that I've had it since I was younger. So it had loads of people that I had met. It didn't really have people that were there for my art. Yeah. So I wanted to purely start an Instagram for that reason. Um, but obviously anything's achievable. Uh, you just got to put your, put your time and brain, 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 <laughs> put your brain, a bit. Um, <laughs> brain in it. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. So, with that being said, in that time span, you had a $7,400 month. I'm not sure if you saw anything in May or this month, which is July, but what's the most you ever sold the piece for in these past three months? About 2000 I think, yeah. Uh, but that's a commission, so obviously with the commission, I take a 50% deposit. So from that commission, I've got the 1000 Um which will obviously follow when the painting's finished. But um, my actual work is probably about 1500 And um, so we're talking about a $2,000 commission and the actual piece you sold, you sold for about 1500 Yeah. And then now that you're selling and you're trying to reduce the hours back at your job and just create artwork pretty much full time if you're just working two hours a week, two days a week at your job what was the biggest struggle to get to this point so quickly like what did you struggle with the most um i don't know you know because Funnily enough, I think you've seen the video. So I had a viral video on TikTok and then I had a really good video on Instagram that's got about, I think it's about 360,000 now. So like, I I think it's this, it's a struggle to keep, especially with my job, to keep everything going. Like when the video went viral on TikTok, I was genuinely losing my mind. Um, funnily enough, we went. We we had like a dinner planned with some friends, and I went to that dinner with my laptop and sat at that table. And I said, 
guys, I'm just so sorry. Like, it's either I'm here with a laptop or I'm not here at all. So, like, I think that everyone wants those viral videos, but genuinely, when they come, they're so, so, so stressful because, especially if you've got a job as well and in the past couple of weeks as well i've moved house so that added to to it all so i yeah i think it's it is hard to try and fit everything in sometimes um when if you've got a lot of stuff going on luckily i haven't got kids or anything else so that would have just been cherry on top of the cake (laughs) i'm just gonna sleep so and with that being said tell me this What would you say is the biggest lesson out of everything? I know you probably feel like you learned a lot, but out of everything, what's the biggest lesson you learned so far from going through the training? Um, not to undervalue yourself. Like, I feel like my work's been at a high level for quite some time, but when I think about it now, it wasn't a decent price, so... I, I'd say like a year or two ago, I was selling paintings for like five hundred pound piece, and to me, honestly, five hundred quid, I'm good. Like, <laughs> great. Um, there were some smaller paintings that I was doing, uh, and I called it like affordable art. Things and they were just on paper, um, and I was selling them for like ninety pound. And at the time, I just thought, right, I can bash these out. 90 quid, cool, in my pocket. <laughs> but when you think about it now, it, it's, yeah, I think, I think coming into the training, like when seeing all the other artists and stuff, obviously different stages of their journeys, um, I think that was one thing that really sort of hit home as such. Because you, when, you know, when you start selling your work, you, wait, you don't know how to, how much to sell it for. You work out obviously the normal stuff of your supplies and everything else and your time and that. But it, yeah, I think that's a, always a difficult thing for for any artist. It's probably one question that they ask themselves or other people the most. Yeah, you know, makes total sense. So with that being said, now that now that you talk a little bit about pricing, what's the least expensive or original somebody could purchase from you? Uh, well, I've just sold one today, so that was three hundred and fifty. So you went from like ninety, it's like three fifty at the very least. That was that was a paper painting, so <laughs> I've got it. It's very big, but it's good. Like so, this one it comes with like the mount. It's, it's really nice too. Is that you said it's mounted? That's matte. I'll send this mount it with Matt board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's got a mount on the back as well. So, yeah. But something like that, a couple of years ago, I would have, yeah, I would have sold for, I don't know, even like 75 quid. <laughs> you, yeah. You, but it's all part of the journey, isn't it? Yep. So, yeah. So now, even though you're still like super, super early, right? But if you at this point had to give yourself advice to three months ago Katie what advice would you give yourself um be consistent so like I've known this for years especially like social media is be consistent be consistent however sometimes as I said it gets difficult to kind of get everything done um but being consistent will also provide you a schedule for yourself um, and make sure you're sort of showing up for yourself. Um, I saw a video probably in the last three months and the lady on there said that they were talking like about content creation and they said, if you're not willing to show up for yourself, then why why do you expect anyone else to show up for you? super important because obviously everyone gets bogged down and stressed and stuff but if you want to keep moving whatever you're doing, I think it's super important to 
get a sort of schedule that works for you um as a person like not everything that works for one person will work for another um but try and do that you know try and create a good schedule and, and consistency for yourself so that you're showing up um and people recognize that oh you and for those watching this right now right what advice would you give to the artist that's let's say where you were three four months ago who's watching this and listening in so, so consistency show up it's, it doesn't really need to be complicated um i think we we over complicate things uh sometimes um know your worth if someone says no they say no move on it's fine um don't let it get also don't let it get um personal because not everyone's gonna like your work it doesn't matter how good it is like it, there's always going to be people <laughs> don't like you or don't like what you're doing sort of thing so just keep moving focus on the positives and um i genuinely think if you put your um if you put your time aside and give it a bit of brain power you'll you'll get there and then if let's say somebody's saying like you know what i think i'm gonna do what katie did i'm gonna go ahead and join artist rise so let's say somebody day one joining the training what advice would you give that artist if they were like new yeah if, so they 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 like i'm i'm joining the train they call you say hey katie i'm joining the training today any advice take it a step at a time i think uh, and this is i think this is something you see overall but it's something you see in the training that like i say everyone wants that viral video everybody wants it to like happen like like, like that and it it doesn't because you've got to you've got to grow in the process if you know if it happens straight away or um for you then you're probably not going to be prepared for it um and i've seen this before where people have gone really viral and they're not prepared for that amount of uh you know that amount of work so if they're going into the training take it one step at a time um, when I started, we did a couple video, like we did a few, because I looked at it with my partner, Matt, and we looked at like three videos a night, and I, I'm like an eager beaver, so I was like, maybe we watch a couple more, and, and then he'd go to work, and I'd be like, I'm at, I've got some time, maybe I should, and he's like, no, <laughs> no, do what you're supposed to do, and take your time, and do whatever you need to do, what the training's telling you to do, but take it step by step. Otherwise, when you run, you know, you'll go too far, sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah. So, hey. really just pace yourself through the training. Don't rush it. Take your time and it'll work. And I think then you really get to know when you take your time and you really think about something in depth you really get to know what path you're on and what the reason you're creating the artwork for and how you do different things i think you learn things about yourself that you probably weren't aware of because you have taken that step-by-step -step method oh, yeah. i agree that's the next question <laughs> what advice being someone who worked with me now for almost four months if not four months Mm -hmm. What advice would you give me? What advice would you give Gerard? Um, I don't know. And go, I'm going to tell you, like I tell everybody, honest advice, don't worry, it won't hurt my feelings. It's, this is, I want you to just be completely honest with yourself. You have to say, you know what? If I had to give you advice, this would be my advice for you. It could be about the training, not, it could be personal life, whatever. I said, I say, I think my artists know me better than anybody else. That's mm -hmm. what I literally spend all my time with for the most part. So if you had to give me advice, know me better than anybody who's watching this, what advice would you give me? I say just keep doing, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, I think a part of the, a good part of the training is that every, everything keeps getting updated, which I think is really important because 
I think sometimes you'll pay for some sort of training and it'll get to a point where it cuts it off. And I like it's continuous. Um, but my probably my favourite part of the training is the Facebook group. Um, I think it's a brilliant because it's it, when you get, when you finish the training, that's all well and good and you've learned what you need to learn and you've gone through that process. However, after that, that doesn't stop because you've got the support of yourself um, through like, you know, the other stuff that you do. And then you've got the support within the group, which also you're a part of. Um, so when people put obviously stuff in the group, then you are, you know, you're present for that and you're informed on that information. So it becomes more of like a community, which I think is really important. In terms of advice, just, yeah, just keep doing doing things just keep doing keep doing what you're doing i should just keep doing what i'm doing <laughs> yeah yeah it's good it's good and you had a pretty pretty crazy three months like the go from where you were at to literally having seven thousand plus just last month really we're talking about really like two months and we're talking about after learning it so with that being said two months getting to like a seven thousand dollar month What's the goal? Where do you see yourself in three years? <laughs> that was a real sigh. Um, God. The crazy thing is, and I say this, you're going to see this if you see the other interviews. Every single one of you that I asked this question to, it all started off with them all saying, I don't, I don't know. It's the big thing to think about. Um, I, well, I would want to expect that I'm in my own studio. I have my, I have a studio at home and I love working at home but I also think it's really nice to have a physical space where people can visit and speak to you and see you and um outside obviously you're not going to invite people down to your house right <laughs> um but obviously then I'd want to be by that time I'd want to be full time um and be doing more um like bigger art shows like be more present in the art space. I think that was something that I struggled with beforehand. Um, is that I, it wasn't just finding people to buy your art. It's like, I had no art friends. Like I didn't, it, you didn't really, um, it's very difficult to find artist friends. Uh, you know, just, you know, find people. Yeah. Uh, just, otherwise people think you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> like what's this weirdo one um but that'd be really nice if i had sort of like a community where i sort of where i'm from and you know from like a, a local point of view but um in terms i don't financially god god no i don't know <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> that was very stutterish i'm really sorry um but yeah as i said if even if i'm at like a, a five and I, I just stay at where I'm at now, I'd be, I'd be more than happy because this is not a money-making scheme. It's, it's nice when it comes and it's good to get your worth in terms of the value, the financial value. But the, the money thing is not really the thing I think about in three years. It's more I'd like to be, I'd like to have a name as an artist reputation as such rather than you know the fine you know the financial aspect to it if that makes sense it makes total sense and if you have to leave everybody with just a few words what would be your last words for the artists watching this <laughs> invest in yourself you know super important um watch watch geroids uh, that's just where i started watch his <laughs> youtube channel I've watched probably all of your videos. <laughs> um, so yeah, go do that. Invest in in yourself from a financial point of view um, and from a time point of view. Time is so important, and I think people really overlook time. Time is money, and you don't get that back. You can you can earn money back. You can't earn time back, so use it wisely. And sometimes you have to risk things. 
because you don't get anything back without risking some stuff. So believe in yourself and invest in yourself and watch Jerry's YouTube channel, which then will lead him here. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, that's going to be everything. I really, really appreciate you coming on here, Katie. Yeah. Congrats to the such quick success and hopefully steady success. And I know you said if you could just step five per month, you'll be happy. But I'm putting into the universe that you'll be doing 10 because you already did seven. Yeah, that million's coming. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, we'll end it here. Thank you very much. <laughs>